There's a hashtag that's trending right now called national divorce. Another hashtag that's been trending all afternoon is civil war. <laughs> Why do you think this is? Uh, it's trending for a reaction, of course, to the raid on former President Trump's home in Mar-a-Lago, showing exactly where I think the, the United States right now stands on this civil divide. Um, we just bring you up to speed on some of the facts, you know, on what happened overnight. We'll bring you up to speed on that piece of it, and then we're going to unpack the sort of political fallout from it, shall we? Okay, so the story goes that on Monday, the home in Mar-a-Lago in South Florida, where former President Trump lives and his wife Melania, was raided by the FBI. And apparently they used what's called... Um, Oh, the parsing teams, I, the, the, the word escapes me right now. So they had people who were looking through all of the documents in order to see if the prosecutors could see those things or if they were privileged documents. What they were looking for were not clear, were not clear on yet. We have a lot of speculation. The New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, all are reporting that this is in relationship to document collection, documents that the president took when he left office that he wasn't supposed to. In a couple of boxes that the National Archives was upset that he took, that he shouldn't have taken right and that they were at his home now this could be totally false because nobody has seen the court order for the raid yet the fbi is not talking uh these are all according to close sources right so we could be totally barking up the wrong tree but what we know right now the raid is said to be connected to an investigation about classified information that may still be in his possession which would be against the law now what law uh, the law is U.S. Code 2071 relating to concealment, removal, or mutilation of records and reports. So you see here the consequences of violating that law is that the person could face prison time and shall forfeit his office, his office and be disqualified from holding any office under the United States. So that is one of the things that has Twitter and Trump supporters all up in arms. They're saying this is an attempt to take him out of the running. Right? Okay, but let's go back a little bit here because I think, yes, we're talking about some of the legalese here and some of the documents and what code, but the FBI raided the former, pres the former president's home while he wasn't there. They went in and they apparently cracked open his, his own safe in his house, yes. right? They sent armed guard, they sent all sorts of armed agents with machine guns yes. to his house. You see the videos and you see the, you know, you see the photos from these guys like storming this property. And then what's odd of course is that you have the secret service standing by, like outside, they're armed as well. So you have the secret service there watching the house while the other government agency, the FBI is raiding the house. Yes. Um, on top of that, you then have, of course, the president wasn't home at the time, and I, you know, found out about it later. This happens under the the, the cloak of darkness. They went through everything in the property. Actually, uh, reports are now that it started in the morning, but we didn't hear early, about it early. until the president himself. There was a there was a, a report, and the president himself confirmed it. Yeah, I mean, a couple other really interesting things about this is that we're learning from. Let's play this from CNN here. This is from trying to find out like, well, what did the White House know, right? Because there's a lot of interesting pieces about this. What did the White House, President Biden, his office, what did the White House know about this? This is the Justice Department, his Justice Department, which would have had to have signed off on this, right? This is Merrick, Merrick Garland would have had to work in concert with the FBI and uh, uh, coordinated this raid. There were no leaks about it. It was kept totally quiet. Given the well, implications of this, former president, probable candidate, I think the current president ought to say whether he knew about it uh, in advance from the attorney general, because I, I think a lot of Americans, a lot of Republicans are going to want to know the answer to that question tonight. Dana, we do have the answer to that question. Yeah, and my, our understanding is no, uh, that the White House didn't know. And Caitlin Collins was just on uh, earlier in, in this hour saying that she heard as, as well as I that the the Biden White House outside uh, the actual White House, not in the Justice Department. They didn't know. They were blindsided. They found out when we all did when the former president put out that press release. Uh, there will be more reporting uh, to be done, but especially given what David was just saying and given how buttoned up and cautious Merrick Garland is, especially with something as sticky as this, it's hard to imagine that they gave the White House a heads up. Yeah. David, you know, again, what Scott just said, that it's possible that they have martyred Donald Trump there. That language is so interesting. And Merrick Garland, at least from outward views, has been so careful 
up until this point. I mean, wouldn't you think all of this would be taken into account? Well, 100 percent. I, I mean, I think that Garland understands, he, and he has crossed a Rubicon here. If you are going to prosecute a former president of the United States, you'd better be pretty darn sure that you have an open and shut case. And I'm sure that uh, a lot of discussion among the prosecutors took place. I do agree. I would be stunned if anybody in the White House, including the president, knew. I mean, think of all of the criticism that the president laid uh, against Donald Trump for his uh, intervening and uh, trying to uh, shape uh, what the Department of Justice did. Uh, I mean, that was really an essential part of his campaign. Uh, the whole the ethics of a president meddling in these kinds of investigations. So uh, I would be stunned. But to your original question, absolutely. They must feel very sure that they have something here. I don't think this is a fishing expedition. I think the, I think they know what fish they're looking for here. Of course, many are saying they don't believe that for a second. Uh, but I do want to get back around to what the consequences would be and just tell the story a little bit more sequentially. So is it something that would bar him from office that everyone needs to get upset about? Not necessarily. The New York Times' uh, Charlie Savage reports that it really is only, this is something that we figured out during the Hillary Clinton investigation, that the Constitution sets eligibility criteria for who can be president and has and argued that Supreme Court rulings suggest Congress cannot alter those things. They can set a law saying we can bar someone from running again, but it may or may not be enforceable because really the Constitution allows Congress to disqualify someone, but grants no such power for ordinary criminal criminal law, right? So it may not actually be the end all of, no matter what happens in this investigation. The end all of what? of Trump's eligibility to run in 2024, which seems now supercharged, right? Just in the last week, we were reporting that 65% uh, of Americans didn't want Biden and they didn't want Trump for the 2024 race. Uh, that seems to have been charged up by this investigation because people who were on the fence about supporting Trump now seem to have this rallying cry about how this is politically motivated witch hunt. So the CNN uh, piece I was talking about is Dana Bash, who is, you know, political uh, White House ties. And what she says is, no, we, we found out CNN confirmed that the White House didn't know about this. The White House didn't know about this raid, didn't know about it, uh, had no prior knowledge of this thing. Um, and yeah, we just we had we didn't know about it. Do you okay. buy that for a second? Um, I don't buy that for a hot minute. I'm just going to go on record and say I don't buy that. How in the world do you not know about it? Either you're you're playing dumb or you're literally incompetent. Like, how do you not know that your Justice Department is literally about to raid a former president's house? Well, you're not supposed to know, I think, is is <laughs> well, is what okay. their answer would be, that these are separate branches of government, right? Okay. Um, and if you are one of the 6% in our chat saying, no, this is proper use of justice, then the White House shouldn't, you, you would think the White House should not have known, right? And I'm going to reserve my judgment until we know more. Uh, but Trump said in a statement, he had been working with and cooperating with relevant government agencies. This is in relationship to these documents. In fact, in January, he handed over 15 boxes of documents and they must have felt like something was absolutely missing in there. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that inside those documents, they may include, this is a person familiar with the records, say they may include a letter from former President Barack Obama left for his successor. So, you know, those like leave on the desk type letters that presidents leave for one another and correspondence between Mr. Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Uh, so, you know, the Obama letter, um, I understand you are supposed to leave those types of things. In fact, presidential historian Michael Beschloss has said that the, this Presidential Records Act, will post his tweet, was passed in response to Nixon's effort to take his presidential tapes and papers with him to California, where they were in danger of being destroyed. So this law requires presidential documents of all kinds to be preserved, even if it was a private letter from former President Obama, 
Legally, they can't be destroyed just because a president feels like it, nor can he take them away and sell them for cash, nor can he give them to a foreign government if he likes. So Garrett uh, Graff is a uh, Watergate historian, and he was asked uh, these questions um, in a tweet earlier today. He was asked about, well, you know, how does this compare? People are comparing this to Watergate. How is it different? How is it similar to Watergate? Um, and here was a thread. He said, what's the difference between this and Watergate? Um, and the first tweet he asked, he says, well, the idea the FBI launched a raid on a former president would have been approved and monitored at the highest level of the Justice Department. Hard to even imagine how high the bar of probable cause must have been for the Bureau to initiate such a politically sensitive search. OK, number two, he says a search warrant means an independent federal judge also signed off on the probable cause and independently believes evidence there was likely a crime committed and that more evidence would be found at Mar-a-Lago. That's huge, too. Now, I just want to pause there because late this afternoon, we got some information about this judge. So Phil Keating, a reporter at Fox News, broke this story and sort of sent shockwaves through the Internet. Like, who's this judge in Florida that signed off on this raid on the president's house. Like, where did this guy come from? You would have had to have had an independent judge sign off on this raid. Here's Phil Keating. Here is uh, Fox News. Uh, let's listen to this. Um, and here's what he had to say about this. And this morning, the New York Post is now reporting that the federal magistrate here in Florida who approved this search warrant uh, after he left working for the U.S. Attorney's Office back in 2008, he then went into private practice and represent seven, several associates of the disgraced financier and accused serial pedophile, Jeffrey Epstein. Wow, this judge is actually, uh, this judge was the former lawyer for one Jeffrey Epstein. Let that sink in for a second. I mean... Former lawyer for Jeffrey Epstein. Okay. Nothing to say about that. So do you think that do you think that that's possibly the motivation is they thought is Trump does Trump have any records that he would hold over any, you know, bigger person's head for some reason to win the election or whatever? Like, do you think that that could have been some of the motivation? Because that that's kind of coincidental. I mean, it's a great question. That's one of the questions we asked in our poll right now. And you can weigh in on this. Is this politically motivated? I mean, so a judge who was the former lawyer who clearly had privileged information yes. under Jeffrey Epstein, right? If he was representing Jeffrey Epstein, he had privileged information. Who made that guy a judge? Now he's a judge, okay? And he's signing off on this raid of the president's property. You know, I'm just going to throw it out there. You guys be just, you, I don't know. I don't have the insider information, but these are, this is the, this is the deal. Well, and think about this too. This would have had to have been known in advance because they would have had to have known that 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 particular judge would approve this. So there would have had to have been some kind of communication because they could go to any judge in Florida, right? It didn't have to be a judge in Trump's specific area, or did it even have to be a judge in Florida? I don't know, but they obviously knew that this judge would approve it because you can't just, you know, a judge a judge has to have a good reason to approve something. Like they can't just willy nilly right. say yes. They they have to follow the Constitution. They have to follow the law. So if this is somewhat outside of the law, it just seems kind of fishy that they went to specifically to this lawyer or this judge. Now, Andrew Yang, who was a former presidential candidate, has come out on Twitter and said that he really feels like the optics of this are very dangerous for our country, even though he is no fan of Trump. And he linked the, to this person named uh, at Pope Hat or Dark Times Hat, who gives this good explanation of why these things are extremely dangerous. Now, um, this tweet, he says that the other thing, so he says the other thing about searching for misappropriated documents is the lapse of time from January 20th, 2021, when Trump left office until now. One thing federal magistrates tend to scrutinize is what's the evidence that these items are location are at this location now, right? So they'd have to have some fresh intel. So people are asking if they're searching for X, can they seize Y? He says that's very unlikely. But the more I think about it, the more I re suspect recent highly actionable intelligence, possibly from a cooperator, drove this and its timing because the need for freshness, the proof that there's evidence there now, 
is the key. He says, I keep coming back to this based on the stuff they haven't gone after, which is a big point, right? Either this is the greatest overplayed hand ever, or there is something very dramatic that we don't know about. So th this is the question, right? Is it the biggest overplayed hand ever? Or is it just something that we are not privy to? Nigel Farage woke up this morning in England with uh, this news and he something was he couldn't believe what had happened. He's a Trump ally. And he, of course, uh, was shocked by this. Uh, he went on the news this morning to say what he believes could we could be leading towards a civil war in the United States and violence as a result of this. Listen. It's been a witch hunt against Donald Trump ever since he was elected in 2016. Uh, Russia hoaxes, conspiracy after conspiracy. But this, this is truly astonishing. I mean, no former president, even people like Nixon, who left office in disgrace, no former president has ever been treated like this. Um, and it shows me uh, the extent to which they are very, very scared of Donald Trump. They're scared he's going to come back. His party will storm the midterms and he's coming back to the White House in 24. And I think to any fair minded person, they're going to say, how on earth can this be happening in 21st century America? What have we become? A banana republic. And actually, in terms of the electorate and fair-minded people, it will play very heavily in Donald Trump's favor. The danger and the worry is that the divisions in America are so great. The preponderance that we've seen towards street violence over the last couple of years is growing. And, and, and I, I just worry that it could provoke some sort of violent reaction. Yeah. And that is the big concern. And some would argue, look, we've already been through the, you know, we've already been through a civil war. We've already f sort of fought the second civil war and that Democrats won. There's an argument to be made that Democrats with what they've managed to do in this witch hunt and going after political enemies like this, they've managed to square off and have actually won the fight. Um, and I don't know. It seems like. Well, look, I'm not a lawyer. Right. I'm listening to other experts a, a sort of take on this. But at the same time, I do know a little bit about the Mueller investigation from reading Andrew Weissman's book, which was from the horse's mouth. Right. And Andrew Weissman was a lead investigator in the Mueller investigation right under Mueller, Robert Mueller. And they were legitimately concerned that they had to have something so ironclad to bring against Trump because it, anything that they brought would be seen as politically motivated. And they had things that they thought were actionable on a scale, like, you know, 60, 70% is enough a lot of times to prove criminal intent. They thought they had it and they still wouldn't bring any anything that they thought could look at all partisan. Uh, there are cooler heads inside the Justice Department that do not want to be called partisan in any way that they do believe in the reputation of the FBI and the Justice Department. And they would not do this unless they had something that was literally a smoking gun. At least that was the case during the Mueller investigation. I believe that that is how, why that ended the way it did. Now, we're under a different administration. There is a different appetite. There's The midterm elections are going to be huge. Um, that may not be the case anymore. It, the, we just don't know. We don't, but there are people that are saying, hey, clear your calendar. Kevin McCarthy, the minority leader in the House of Representatives, Kevin McCarthy, uh, tweeted this earlier today. He said, Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. This was his tweet. Um, and then he went on to say, uh, I've seen enough. He tweeted a longer statement where he said, I've seen enough. The Department of Justice has reached an intolerable state of weaponized politics. Pol That's very hard to word to say. Can, I can all of you at home say that word? Politicization, politicization. Um, I, the Department of Justice has reached an intolerable state of weaponized politicization. When Republicans, you're adding a syllable. Am I adding a syllable? Yes. Say it. Politicization. Politicization. Okay. You're adding another T somewhere. I like extra <laughs> syllables. I want you to have an extra syllable. That's the bonus for watching our show live. You get an extra syllable tonight for free. For free. <laughs> totally free. Like I'm not going to even reverse the charges. Uh, then when Republicans wow. take back the House, he says we will conduct immediate oversight of this department. He says, follow the facts and leave no stone unturned. Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. Okay, but 
again, Congress can investigate whoever the heck they want. They then have to come up with things to hand over to the Justice Department. And if the Justice Department is still run by Merrick Garland, how far is that going to go? Right. Yeah. The raid also came on the same day as Axios reports in this scoop this morning by the New York Times' Maggie Haberman. This is an amazing story, and who knows? I want to know how she confirms this, first of all. We know the the lies that the New York Times has has been telling uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, But Maggie Haberman at the New York Times says, Staff in the White House residence periodically discovered wads of printed paper clogging a toilet and believed that President Trump had flushed pieces of paper. That should have been preserved as official records, she says. Haberman is scheduled to release a new book on Trump this fall. Oh, how convenient. So she's got a new book with inside sources that people would... How many people are going into the to Trump's bathroom right. in his private Oval Office bathroom or even in, you know, in his private residency upstairs in the White House? Like, who's going in to his bathroom and seeing clumped, wadded up paper and going through it. Would that be it. toilet paper? Do they paper realize or that that's good, what uh, happens yeah, toilet when paper people poop? Is exactly. toilet paper like, also admissible? <laughs> right. Someone, when they go to the bathroom, they're using something called toilet tissue. Or someone in the chat um, <laughs> asked about the president, Presidential Records Act. Does junk mail count? Do they have to archive that too? Right, I guess so. If it's sent to the president, do I we mean, have to get all of that? Well, you know, this His also AARP bring, magazine. Well, this also brings up an interesting point about Hillary Clinton, right? So you think about double standards here, right? You have you have literally Hunter Biden on video smoking crack with prostitutes. Okay, where is he right now? Is he is he is he fine? We don't know. We don't know, but he's we fine. We don't know. He's not, I haven't seen anybody rating anything right now. Uh, what about Hillary Clinton? They right? took his camera. Oh, they took his camera. Um, Hillary Clinton, right? She had a server set up in her own house and was literally using money to create, uh, you know, uh, create a disinformation campaign about, about Russiagate, basically fabricating a steel dossier, which by the way, we should also point out that steel dossier that was totally fabricated was then used to do FISA warrants. Mm-hmm. Like that Steele dossier was used for then federal judges to be issuing FISA warrants. Think about that well, for a second. Well, and when they and when they raided her home, did they find anything in, in that raid or or what did that turn up nothing like that? No, Trump's they let raid? her hand over documents voluntarily. Yeah. But where, um, where you know, where's that email server? Like where's that so she left the White House or she was in the White House or left the White House or left the government and had a private server with classified and and uh, and emails that were not supposed to be taken or separated from uh, you, you know from uh, congressional records, right? We're, I love the double standard here. I mean, the hypocrisy is thick. Ron DeSantis of Florida, uh, the governor of Florida, where this happened in his backyard, he tweeted this. He said the raid of Mar-a-Lago is another escalation in the weaponizing of federal uh, federal agencies against the regime's political opponents. While people like Hunter Biden get treated with kid gloves, now the regime is getting another 87,000 IRS agents to wield against its adversaries. This is a banana republic. Now, Fox News is making the point that, look, the president didn't pack his own boxes uh, you know, it, it, Sean Hannity asked Eric Trump last night, you know, did the president really like get in his overalls and pack up the White House himself? Come on. This is not what he was up to. Right. Um, so, OK, that may be some kind of data point. But if we watched the prosecution of Michael Cohen, we did know that Michael Cohen said regularly when he worked with Donald Trump, Donald Trump was not intricately involved in a lot of paperwork or details. He would come in and ask, what about this thing? What about this thing? What about this thing? And be like, yeah, I'm going to take care of it. Sign this. What about this? Right. So it does beg the question, is it something that the president would have been intricately involved with some kind of paperwork that he is actually keeping on his own filing, printing labels, you know, how I love labels. Um, you know, that is not sort of, that's not in line with the personality that we seem to know. So that's just one question. Is it the, the data point? No, of course not. Of course he could be hiding things we don't know about. Uh, but it does seem like these are, it, it, it seems 
strange, right? That he would have these documents that he is going out of his way to hide in some place in his personal residence. Marco Rubio, senator from Florida, tweeted this. Using government power to persecute political opponents is something we have seen many times from third world Marxist to dictatorships, but never before in America. And I think maybe that kind of gets to the heart of it, right? It's this idea of due process and was due process followed? And do we really believe for a second that the White House doesn't know that President Biden's staff, no one in the White House knows, knew about this? And so when they asked, when they were asked about that, we have no idea. We were blindsided by it. We have no idea this was going to happen. Your own Justice Department investigating a former president? Okay. Well, here's Eric Trump uh, last night talking about this raid. Listen. All right. Joining us now live, he was with his father uh, for most of the day, as I understand it today, Eric Trump is with us. Eric, uh, you were with your dad as this was unfolding? I was, Sean. In fact, I was the guy that got the call this morning, and I called my father let him know that it happened. So I was involved in this all day. And, you know, welcome to politics in, you know, in the, in the you know, 2000s. Um, Sean, my father never got so much as a speeding ticket in his life, you know, until he made one decision, and that's to go down the escalators of Mar-a-Lago and spend a lot of money and go and actually fight for this country for the first time. And he did a better job than anybody has ever done. And they started coming after him. The Washington Post, the day he won, 2016, the day he won, November 8th, that night they wrote an article. This is when impeachment begins. He wasn't president. He hadn't been elected for less, you know, for five minutes at that point. And they start, this is when impeachment begins. And then he's impeached the first time. And then he was impeached a second time. And they slandered him. They belittled him. You know, they went after him. They went after all of us. There's no family in American history that has taken more arrows in the back than the Trump family every single time. And you know what? It's gone on past politics. You look at the attorney generals. You look at district attorneys all over the country. All they want to do is they want to get Donald Trump. They raise money on it. They send fundraising emails about it. They brag on camera about it. They go after him. They subpoena him. I'm probably the most subpoenaed person in the history of the United States. Every single day we get another subpoena. And okay, so this reason. is the Trump talking line. This now seems to be the rally cry around the GOP as well. Although uh, missing in this conversation so far is Mitch McConnell. Uh, Demo or Republicans are waiting for him because he always seemed to come out on the side of the president during his administration and has not spoken yet. Um, and, you know, this is the cry that it's a witch hunt, right? That it's politically motivated, that it's been going on the entire president since the president was elected in 2018. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, this well, is, can you can, he's either going to be martyred in this, right? I mean, if, if, if he has kept from running, and he's already hinted at it, he's kind of in a, in a roundabout way said he's running in 2024, like this is, this is the future of America then. You can, you can through, use, you can weaponize the, the judicial system, you can weaponize the prosecute, prosecutorial system to go after your political opponents. We've already seen the Democrats doing this, by the way, if you think this is the first time, this is not. I mean, just think about what they did against the Green Party in the last election. Now, we interviewed the Green Party presidential candidate, Howard, um, uh, Howard uh, Hawkins, on the show, uh, Howie Hawkins. And he was talking about all of the ways in which the Democratic Party weaponized legally to get them off of the ballot in multiple states. Think about what they did to Jill Stein, Green Party candidate. Like, this is what these guys do. They yes. go after political candidates so that they, they can't run. They're kept off the ballot. The, I mean, we saw what the what the DNC did to Bernie Sanders, right? With those leaked emails, the only way we even know about that is because of Julian Assange. So we're seeing the collapse here, guys, right before our eyes. You can use you can use this system to crush your political opponents and not even allow them not even allow them the theater to to for people to vote for these people. Well, look, if there is some kind of indictment coming, the president will have the opportunity to defend himself and we will get a trial, right? If that is the case. Uh, if nothing comes of it, nothing comes of it, right? Uh, but at the very least, we know. I, th I think what, what upsets me the most is, is how it plays out to, to the public at large and how hurtful it is to some people and how so many people are saying this is his comeuppance, we've been waiting for this for so long, right? And how, how few of us are, waiting, are ready to s sort of let's see what it really is. You know, and how and how, like I said, how how hurtful it is to so many people. Well, you know, I want to bring up something it's like if don't talk about how virtuous your dad is and say he hasn't even had a speeding ticket, because when do we all think the last time Trump actually drove a car was? 
Yeah, so I right. Right. I don't think he can drive. <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah, I, so he I did. Don't, that's that's a bad. Use something else. <laughs> he did sit in the cab of a truck and do this. You know, so <laughs> yeah, about that. Right, um, and he admitted to the Stormy Daniels stuff. Like, you know, it was Michael Cohen that got caught for that, not him. Like he, I don't. I'm not going to defend any virtues of Donald Trump at all. Right. Um, but I just sort of want to be sensitive to how divisive this is and how, you know, I mean, they they better know what they're doing if they're going to upset this many people and for the optics of it. I, I just think we're we're in dangerous waters here. I mean, I really think we're we're in a country divided in the United States right now. And we're seeing I mean, you're talking about you're talking about states talking about secession. I mean, you're talking about Florida talking about it, you're talking about Texas talking about it. Um, if people lose their faith entirely in a political system where they don't even know if their vote is going to be counted properly. Right. Because who's running the Secretary of State's offices in these different states that's going to be responsible for counting ballots? Who who can trust them, right? That's the fear here that we're heading into right now. Yes. Um, well, and the worst part of it is you've got people that are listening to these politicians and people are choosing a side based on their words alone, but they don't pay attention to what they actually do. Because if you did, you'd realize it's just one big party and we're getting duped over and over again, thinking that, you know, the side that we happen to be on or, or most people happen to be on, they're doing everything for us when actually they are not. 